everybody, welcome back. One thing I wanted to share with you is the tooling for the mill. I know that many of you have mentioned carbide's the way to go. I can understand that with what the mill does. You're gonna quickly burn up high-speed steel. Sure, it's fine for nylon and that sort of thing, and even aluminum, that's what I used on the sides for this. But I know that I wanna get some carbide. But I want to take it slow. Carbide is not cheap. Carbide end mills. I think you can get some sets on eBay for I don't know, $60 US, something like that. $50, bucks. You know, an eight-piece set or something. To, to start out with, as you know, I uh, I bought some high-speed steel carb uh, high-speed steel end mills. And that was just so I could get started and practice using my nylon, aluminum maybe even steel. I know these are going to quickly dull, but again, these were 16 bucks. It's it I'm I'm still very early learning, so I want to make sure that I know what I'm doing before I go and start working with carbide. However, I wanted to go ahead and get a carbide end mill and I was thinking a 3 quarter, maybe a half, and I ended up going with a half inch carbide end mill. And the reason for that is I know at some point here soon, I'm going to hit a project where I want to use use some steel, or I'm just not liking the finishes or the or the results that I'm getting from the high speed steel. So I wanted to have at least one carbide insert, carbide end mill, sorry, that I could use to work out a project. Now, also many of you have commented that uh, the carbide lasts a lot longer as long as you take care of it. You don't drop it. You don't dent it, ding it, and slam it into something. These should last a really long time. So my intent is either to find a, a small set. I think I'm going to look for a small set on eBay or something that that's carbide. So I just have a, a little bit of a variety of sizes and then that's it. I'm going to wait until I actually have a specific use or size that I need an end mill for. And then I'll buy it at that time. I think a three quarter inch end mill that's carbide on eBay is, or Amazon, it's like 80 bucks, 85 bucks. They're not cheap. So I'm just going to buy them as I need them, other than looking for a starter set. That's what I'll call a starter set. Kind of like the high speed steel that I got, but carbide. But for now, I do have one carbide insert. I got this on Amazon. Some of you are asking, you know, if I could post links. I don't, I don't really want to post links. I mean, I can. If you want to know what I bought specifically, shoot, send me an email. My email is in my about page on this channel. I'll be glad to share with you whatever you want to know uh, with my email or even a comment on the video. I read everything so far. My channel's certainly not big enough to not be able to read every comment. Um, so if you're curious about something specific, put it in the comment and I'll, I'll reply back. But I'm not affiliated with anybody, so I really don't want to put links, and I, I don't want to steer anybody wrong either. You know, you got to remember, I'm also an amateur learning as I go, and if I buy something that is really a bad purchase, I don't want to throw it out there and, and mislead anybody. So this is just my experience and what I'm doing. However, I usually will state where I got something. Amazon, for instance. It's a Speed Tiger. Carbide half inch end mill carbide, so you can search for it. It's you know, it's Amazon. It'll show right up But again, I'll be happy to share with anybody who wants to know a specific item where I picked it up I'll share it with you But for today, I just wanted to open this up. Take a look at it. This is a speed tiger Insert carbide not insert speed tiger end mill So let's get this opened up and see what we got. Kind of curious how well it's packaged. So it's got some protective sticker. It's got a Ziploc bag, just a sticker to cover that. And kind of your standard little holder. It does have a little bit of uh, foam in the bottom of it so you don't so it doesn't damage the tip um, there's just no comparison carbide versus high-speed steel let me show you 
So this is a half inch. I have a half inch. I just showed it to you. High speed steel. I mean, this is how this thing came. It's, it's kind of dirty and rough. It's sharp if you feel it, but the end of it is, there's no sense. So you couldn't plunge cut this particular end mill because it would, there's a center portion of it. You'd have to pre-drill first, then you could, so let's say you wanted a counterbore for a cap head screw. You could use this, but you got to pre-drill and tap and everything first. That's probably how you're going to do it anyway. You could then use this to counterbore for your cap head screw. But let's say you just wanted a recess hole for a magnet or something. Well, that's where you could use an end mill like this. I and mean, notice there's, it goes all the way through and it's going to cut all the way to the middle. It's not going to leave any hole. So you could use this without pre-drilling if you needed to. Anyway, the quality of this thing is, is just a lot better. You can tell this is carbide. This is, this is something I'm going to take care of and be careful with. But anyway, I now have a carbide end mill for that project that may come up that I need to, to use something and, and get through some steel perhaps. But again, I just want to show you the difference between the two. Anyway, that'll be some upcoming future projects. I'm not, I don't have any particular need for this at the set at this second, but I do have a list of projects I want to work on. And now I've got a nice carbide end mill. It's the only carbide end mill that I have that I may end up using to work with my materials. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Dees, this is my workshop. Before we start today's project, we need to clean up this mess. The last project I did, I worked on flattening out and squaring up a block of aluminum, if you remember. And it turned out really well. Go watch those videos if you want to see the details on that. But, as many of you all out there know, when you're working with a mill, chips go everywhere. It's not like the lathe. The lathe, you can have a big mess too, but they're kind of contained. This here makes a big mess. So, that's just part of it. Right now, before we get started, I'm going to get this workshop cleaned up so we have a nice workspace, and then we'll continue on with the next project. So, here's a little time lapse for you. All right, I've been fiddling with this for an hour. Again, I'm just learning the machine and learning how to tram things in, and this is very finicky. Right or wrong, this is what I'm doing. I'm using some parallels. Um, I need to do a little more research online, find out what the tricks of the trade are. But I'm gonna sweep this back and forth. This is as close as I can get it without trying to make it a little better, and then I screw the whole thing up and have to start over. So right now we are, let's zero it out. At zero and I'm about I'm guessing 500 thou out but you know you could push on the table with the flex there, there's a little give and take in this whole thing so let's go ahead and show you where I am I believe I'm about 500 thou out 
or not 500 thou, half a thou, sorry. We'll just crank this over slowly because we don't want to move the quill. I don't think I can, the spindle, I'm sorry. I can't lock the spindle. So if that was to twist at all, which it may do a little bit, that's going to affect the outcome. Of course, I just ran this across and I was only half a thou off. Now I'm just coming back and I, I, I think I just need to tighten this machine up or something. I'm, I'm getting very frustrated. If I go all the way across, now it shows I'm a thou out. This is, this is maddening, I'm telling you. This is what I've been working on back and forth. If we move the machine, you know, you can push on it a little bit, pull it. I'm, I must need to tighten some stuff down. But at any rate, this, this is, I'm still learning. I'm not going for precision yet, but I do want to make that. I, I should be able to get zero all the way across there. I'm missing something, but let's zero that out one more time. And maybe I'm fighting something that I don't need to be fighting. We'll come back across. And there we are, less than half a thou. So I'm gonna leave it here. I'm tired of bumping it and trying to go back and forth looking for perfection. I, I don't have this thing properly mounted on steel and concrete to where it can't flex at all. It's on a wooden bench. This is as close as I'm gonna get it for now. Someday I'll revisit this, but I've got this tightened up. I'm gonna go with it. I need, I'm, I'm done messing with the tramming part of this. And I'm ready to just start learning how to use this thing and making some cuts. Anyway, I wanted to show you that. It's frustrating. Uh, if any of you have been here, I'm sure there will be a lot of comments, some advice. Go ahead and put it down in the comments and I'll read through them and see where maybe some of that can help. But for now, that's what we're going with.
you just saw some clips of me drilling a hole in this. I, I said my dad's got a nice drill press, but I still have this and I thought, I'm gonna go ahead and put that drill and drill a hole and put a cotter pin in this and assemble this for him. So we've got our steel roller that we made. We're gonna put a washer on here and then we got our cotter pin, cotter key. And of course I wanna snip those down, but let me grab uh, some side snips. So these are too long, obviously, but might as well snip them off. Snip this one off. And then we'll turn those up. Let's see if we can't squeeze them together. I don't have my regular pliers with me. I'll grab them. There, that should be fine, won't go anywhere. There, now he can roll and do whatever it is he needs to do. That won't come off of there. There we go. So I'm gonna call that project complete. Now he won't have to mess with that, it's ready to go. I think he's anxious to get started on that project. Anyway, thanks for watching. All right, here's a short clip. I'm gonna throw this in a mess and in the shop. Kind of an interesting clip here. I had a request to see this tool in action. What this is is an outside chamfer, chamfering mill. I've never seen one before, but it's a pretty cool uh, tool. I made this arbor for this chamfer mill and uh, turned out very nice. And I'm gonna do a test cut just to see what this thing does. But the official definition of this is an outside chamfering mill is designed to economically chamfer a large variety of diameters on tubing, pipes, and rods. The chatterless teeth provide, produce a heavy chamfer. One size can accommodate many size parts. The outside chamfering mill is available in the 60 and 90 degree angles. May be reground many times. So I thought, let's see this thing in action. It's a pretty cool tool. So, if you didn't see that outside chamfer tool, a uh, chamfer mill, let's take that out of here. There's the part, and it's 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 correct, right? This actually might be a 30 degree. I'm assuming it says half inch, 30, yeah, 30 degree. So apparently they come in different degrees, 30, 60, 90, whatever. But anyway, so this is. It's very universal, right? If you want to do some chamfering on some rod, on the mill, even the lathe, you can put this on your tailstock. You can use this. It's very handy. But we're going to test it out. We're going to use my custom arbor that I made for it. Let's get those two together. Nice. We put a little tweak in there. And we're going to mount this up. And the drill chuck, the lathe, the Jacobs chuck anyway, and find chuck key. There we go.
So rather than use, I decided to switch it up. I'm going to use the uh, uh, just a piece of Delrin plastic. I don't want to harm the the chamfer mill. I just want to show you what it can do. Let's see what it does. good enough you get the idea I'll clean that out but let's get that out of there and I'll show you what that's for and of course I didn't have that centered but you get the idea it's a very universal way to put chamfers on different parts and like I said this is Certainly not. I, I should have centered it and all that, but this is just showing you what it can do. Anyway, there you go. That's what a outside chamfer mill can do. Thanks for watching. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Today I'm just going to do a, a little show and tell here. I wasn't going to purchase this, but I decided... I'm going, I, I ended up deciding to go ahead and get it. And the reason was there's several instances where I'm trying to put some flats and on, on a rod for tightening it down with a wrench or something. And it just so happens that either I need a 3 8 rod and the 3 8 uh, end mill or a half inch rod and a half inch end mill to put the flat on that I'm looking for. And Right now I'm using my ER40 collets with my collet chuck adapter for the the spindle on the mill, but I can't, I only got one collet for each size. So I went ahead and broke down, these weren't terribly expensive, and I got a set of R8 collets. So that's going to give me the variety to be able to work on those projects, leave these R8, and, and also I get more height in with my... Uh, my z-axis sorry and i just decided to go ahead and do it i got a really cool holder with the mill anyway so why not this is a set of 13 so i'm gonna have a couple that'll be in the drawer but uh we're gonna go through these check them all out and see how they hold up again this is not the most expensive set out there but it is something that uh, i went ahead and decided to go go ahead and get if you don't have a, a holder or something, they do come with these nice, you know, decent, I mean, it's a case, right? It's a plastic case, keeps it from banging around. That'll protect them a little bit. But anyway, these are, these aren't metric. These are SAE standard. And uh, what I want to do is go through them all. Lately, uh, on some of my videos, you all comment, you got to go through your tools. And you're right. I've been bit several times. I didn't get that 72 tooth gear. Uh, some of the quality of the parts isn't good. So we're going to go through these and if there's anything I don't like I'll contact the seller and Considering what these are no doubt they're going to say well will you take monetary refund as a difference blah 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 They don't really want the stuff back. They just They want to close the case. So we'll see. Hopefully I don't have any issues and we won't have to deal with that But let's get these opened
Well, I got these un un unpacked. And again, it is great advice. Everybody says go through your stuff when you buy sets. Absolutely. So, one, two, three, four, five have blemishes and flaws that I don't like that I'm going to contact them and see what they'll do. It's mostly, most of the grindings the, where the slits are, you can see it on the quarter inch quite a bit, but most of these have that same issue where... It shouldn't, I don't think it should be that way. None of the rest are that way. It's just where their, where their bandsaw or whatever they were doing to cut these just was off. Now, the one that I'm, I really don't like is this one. This is a half inch. That's going to be a very common, commonly used collet. So most of them have that as a blemish, but this one, which I don't think it would functionally hurt it, but it has such a large bore. But they got off track on this side and they actually cut through the collet. Now, I don't think that's an issue. There's a hole in there. I don't think you can see it, but the problem is, like this one here, it's very thin right there on the end. That'll probably break out. It's just because it's a large hole down there. But you know, clean it up. Why do I got, you know, mess with it? So I'm going to take pictures of these, contact the, the seller, see what they'll do. Typically, they're pretty good about responding and most of these sellers will offer a refund or replace the item or, uh, give you half off or you know something like that but the problem is i want replacements for these 